get into today's topic. Hi. Hi. I'm Leah. I'm Brandon. And I want I want to take you guys on an adventure. I want you guys to picture literal trash. Like a garbage can. Like a garbage can. That sits behind the McDonald's on 2nd no, no, Street. No, 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 no. Like your garbage can oh, that no. you forgot to take out before you went on a week vacation. Uh-oh. It's got old bananas in it, some old, like, coffee grounds. The fruit flies are everywhere. The fruit flies are everywhere, and it's just absolutely fucking disgusting. I'm there. That is what we are, but more importantly, that's the anime that we're talking about today. I mean, you could make the offering that all anime is trash, and Um, while I won't discount you on that one, we're talking about some real cream of the crop stuff right here, like stuff that... When people think of anime, they probably think of shit like this. Yeah. And it it just, you know, it doesn't bode too well. Yeah, like the absolute, like, worst of the worst. And, like, well, okay. I I won't admit, like, I like some of these, like, unironically. I do like, like, two of my favorite animes are on this list, but they're trashy. And see, I want to make the distinction. We'll kind of go into this. There's some we're talking about that are just bad, some that are there because they're just extra edgy yeah and some that's like literal trash like i'm watching a soap opera or like jersey shore but anime you know also i won't lie i don't think i've told you this but one thing that i'm very guilty of doing like when i'm alone and you know i want to have a good time i'll just turn on like really trashy like tv not like reality tv but like teen dramas usually is what i go for and I'll just get really fucking wine drunk and I'll just watch it and I'll like scream at the TV about like how stupid it is. So like imagine like a drunk football fan screaming at their television. That's what I do. But with teen dramas, like no fucking shit, Karen. Just throw on Twilight. Was, yeah, Rodney was cheating on you and all that bullshit. It's like me. I mean, minus the wine drunkness because it's usually right as I'm waking up in the morning. But sometimes Dr. Phil's right there on the television <laughs> and it's like, I, I hate it. I like it actually makes me angry anytime I watch Dr. Phil. But it's like it's there. And sometimes you're just enjoying your coffee and sitting on the couch and you just don't have the willpower to like change it to Netflix or something. So you're just watching these people have their lives fall apart and Dr. Phil... Honestly, Dr. Phil doesn't even do that much. He just straight up tells people, hey, we're going to get the right people here in front of you, and we're all going to tell you, God, you fucking stupid. You're ruining <laughs> it. You're awful. And, like, who doesn't like some trash TV every once in a while, regardless of if it's anime or not? It's true. It's there. So It's there for a reason. People mm-hmm. actually invest money to make these programs, and a lot of money, usually. And some, most of the time they're successful because it's just like a train wreck. Like you can't not watch it, you know? God, train wrecks. So fun. Yeah. Um, but so that's what we're going to be talking about today. If you guys don't really watch anime, don't worry. We're going to like describe the trash that ensues in these animes. Oftentimes the plot, like <clears throat> you don't even need a full synopsis of the show. You just need like the premise of the show. Honestly, for most of these, you can watch the first episode and be like, you oh get my it. God, That's this it. is fucking trash. Yeah. Cause I mean, the pilot, it's going to tell you what the show is kind of going to be about. And, uh. Sometimes it's a little rough. So I want to I want to start with the show that kind of inspired this episode a little bit. So like two and a half, three weeks ago, I convinced Leah here to watch a show I thoroughly enjoyed, but it is very trashy and it's, it's Domestic Girlfriend. It's super trashy, but I fucking love it. <laughs> so Domestic Girlfriend, quick uh, overview of it. Uh, we'll, we'll overview first episode, I suppose. It's first scene. First scene. Very first scene is... This boy and this girl sleeping together, and they say that, like, they lost their virginity. It's like, boom, all right, killer track comes in. Like, post-coital. Yeah, like, the show has, like, an insanely good opener. I'll give it that. The The opening song is a banger. Um, it is. Yeah. But then we come back out, and now we're talking about the main character is the guy. Um, and we get him kind of going throughout his day. He's a writer. He's uh, kind of trying to write these books and stuff. And... One of his teachers, he has a big crush on. Anime trope. <laughs> yeah, anime trope. He, he's, he loves his teacher. And he also tells his best friend about how he had slept with this random girl. He met at a mixer or whatever. 
And he ends up seeing her, I think, at the school as well. And he's all nervous about it. And things are kind of like setting it up. So it's like he's got the crush on the teacher, but there's also this girl here that's... uh, He just banged. He just banged and he doesn't really know much about him, but she doesn't really want to go any further into it. She's just kind of like, hey... One night stand. Yeah, it was kind of like... got this out of the way. That is what it was. Uh, And then suddenly uh, his dad... His mom had died and his dad got remarried and the mom has two children and it is of course the girl he slept with and his teacher and so they're all living together under one roof and he's got like kind of crushy things going on between all three of them and it's just oh it's beautiful serendipitous trash it's so cringy it is it's it's a show that like really it draws you inside like you could even be watching it on your own and you kind of cringe a little bit you can't help but like smirk because it's it's a little cringy you know, we're only one in, and I realize that it's 1230, so it's not really the time for alcohol, but honestly, we could do, like, a drinking game God of, damn. like, anime tropes. Like, if they have a, tr- a crush on their teacher, if they have some borderline incestual, like, uh, tendencies, I guess. Yeah, most of the shows, I mean, at least it, it's the, uh, it's not like we're related by blood or anything. That that actually, by the way, that's a direct quote in Domestic Girlfriend. It's not like we're related by blood. Like, that is actually said by one of the characters. Like, they get as close to incest as possible without crossing the line, although one of these does cross the line. A little bit. Uh, <laughs> when we watch this, why? Now... I want to that that's kind of like the the show right there. We're just going to kind of like run through these. But I'm also going to say at the end of these, do we recommend they watch or not? For me, Domestic Girlfriend is a hard recommend. It's a really good show. I fucking love Domestic Girlfriend. It's a good show, Um, but it is it's it's It's, pretty trashy. It's It's trashy. trashy. Uh, Would you like to take us into another one here? Um, Well, I mean, we kind of went out of order. Um, I, vote, I figure we'll jump around a little bit. And we can we'll just jump mark around. off. Okay. Um, you know, I think I'm going to go with this one. Because whenever anybody thinks of just absolute fucking trash anime, mm-hmm. the, even if like you ha- like maybe you've only seen like one anime or like you dipped your toes in, quintessential absolute fucking trash is Elfin Lied or Elfin Lead. Mm. However the fuck you say that name, I've asked absolutely everybody. Nobody knows the right way to pronounce it. But oh my fucking God. It's uh, it's bad. That show upset me quite a bit. And I honestly, I don't remember too much about it because it's just kind of, like it's almost like a fever dream. The biggest thing that upset me is throughout time, like I only recently watched the show, but I'd always heard about it. It always had such super high reviews and if you're on like a a must watch anime list or whatever it's always there there somewhere in that uh, the show is so bad it's terrible see this is one of the animes that i watched when i was younger which considering all of like the nudity and very awkward there's a lot of like unnecessary nudity oh yeah it it has like the trope of uh like a born yesterday girl where like mm-hmm. so it's it's a woman like she has a woman's body but mm-hmm. like she has the mental capacity of a fucking three year old yeah and it's oh it's uh, it's uncomfortable it's so and under, like the it, there's just so but many, also it's just, murder like the reason it's so high up there is I think a lot of people watch it for one of their first shows so I guess the premise of the show if I can remember correctly is it's this girl and she's like a military super weapon. Uh, and she's able to like kill all these people and she's like super like strong. Her, like she can't get killed by bullets or something. Like she's kind of like Slender Man, if I like remember correctly. God. Except like it's not like vis- visible like tentacles, but like she's got like sick and invisible oh, yeah, she's arms got, that are like. Yeah, she does yeah. have psychic powers. That's what it is. She's got yeah. psychic ability. And like she she's a psychic like, super weapon. <laughs> and so she breaks out of this place and as she's escaping, she gets like shot by a special bullet and hits her in the head. And so it gives her like. Amnesia weird memory or... loss so she forgets she's a super weapon uh and so she's kind of got like the split personality that only comes out here and there yeah and just wants to be naked absolutely all the time all the time and like oh god oh oh um so elfin lead uh elfin lied however the fuck you say it 
Um, do you want to go any more in on it or should we? It's just, it's really bloody and it's really like there's unnecessary nudity all the time. Honestly, everything in it is unnecessary. Like I will admit like there, everything is, there's maybe like three minutes of like touching like good content, but like it's mostly nudity or gore. I would have to say, I mean, if my description and my reactions so far haven't said it enough, uh, I do not. No. It's a hard no. Don't watch it. Like it's it's a show you can watch mostly just to be baffled that it's that bad. It's that bad. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like that's all I can think of it. Um, fuck. Fuck. God damn. <laughs> like, uh, I could. I want to go touch on something that I want to say is a little bit of a trashy show, and it's actually. But I will admit, I'll say it right off the bat. Insanely good, but a little trashy. And I don't know if you've seen it. Maybe you saw it a while ago older one but it's always touted at the higher echelon and i believe it is probably one of the best shows ever written uh, but neon genesis evangelion this is where i'm gonna definitely it's it's you kind of dance on the border of yes i think it's a little bit trashy however it's like no in no regards i, I have nothing bad to say about the show because see this is I, I the reason i bring it up right after elf and lied though is because they use a lot of kind of the same writing techniques, kind of. And, like, there is also nudity and stuff in Neon Genesis, but it's actually, like, it's done artistically. It serves big purposes, usually. It's generally... Tasteful. It's very tasteful. Like, it's there for <laughs> purpose. Uh, and I think the show goes into, like, a lot of, like, kind of weird, like, mental and, like, growing up concepts. But... It's a little trashy. That's a little bit. I don't think I've seen Neon Genesis. Oh. I, I've probably watched like maybe like a percent of the amount of anime that you've watched, but I don't think I've seen this one. And I, and it's like sometimes it, it, there's purposes for it and I'd like people to like bring me to light on it. But like I'd say the main show. So the show initially like it had its run and the creator had to end up going with like a third alternate ending because the show was running out of funding and I won't spoil the end of the show. All I can say is congratulations. Uh, but then in the next scene, they have End of Evangelion, which is the movie that comes out because, you know, fans were kind of like, hey, the fuck was that ending? And so, like, they had a little bit of funding come in through the show and they end up being able to do, like, an OVA movie to do an alternate ending or an extension of it. And, like, the opening scene is uh, Shinji jerking it off on a comatose other character and I was, like, sitting there for a second. I was like, was that what I think it was? And then way later on in the show, that character is less comatose. And is like, hey, you jerked off on me. It calls him pathetic. And I'm like, yeah. But, yeah, it, it's, I don't know. There's, like, weird, cringy shit all throughout of it. Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> it's fucked. But it's a really, I hard, hard, 100%, like, it was a show that I watched finished and immediately wanted to rewatch again it was so good but uh yeah definitely it's a it's a hard yes to neon genesis but i haven't seen it but um it sounds it sounds like a fun time and a lot of the shortcomings of the show definitely come from the fact that it had really good like fight like kind of stuff going on in it and it's a mecha anime so i mean there is that that's what kept me away from it for so long because i don't care for mecha personally um but on the counter side of that, in order to like kind of counterbalance their budget, you had like really well animated scenes countered by sometimes upwards of like 30 seconds to a minute of just a still photo with either conversation or like a song going. And it's just a still image like Shinji standing in a bus stop and you're just like content. Are we are we going to... No, we're not we going gonna, anywhere. Are we going to... Next slide, please. No. Next slide, please. No. no next slide. You have to sit there and just wait for it. And it's, sometimes I would get so angry at those scenes. Uh, but yes, hard recommend on Neon Genesis. I haven't seen it. Would watch, though. Fair enough. All right. So Neon Genesis is probably like the only one on here. Actually, no, there's a couple others that are like definitely like really good shows, but there's definitely trash elements to them. So be prepared. They're going to be there. Yeah, it's it's gonna go downhill. It's gonna oh, go downhill. oh yeah. There's definitely some real winners here. Um, so let's let's do fruits basket, which 
I was the one who put this on this. And I actually, I didn't know this, but they had recently cut, like, remastered, not remastered it, but remade it. And, mm -hmm. like, you know, it's the same story, but it's just, it's better Better now, done. Appa it's well, apparently. It's much better done. Um, and I remember when I put this on, you were like, wait, are you talking about the remake? Like, I'm watching, I, I watched this, it was pretty good, it's okay. And no, I'm talking about the original, like, from, I think, like, 2001. And... Oh, <laughs> um, the animation, although it, it, it is a, like an older style and like mm -hmm. it is like the normal animation is good. There's just a lot of really strange effects. Yeah. Um, it's just weird things that happen left and right on yeah. that first episode. I only saw the first episode of the original. I've only seen like the first four episodes of the new one, too, but. It, the original talking about that first episode, it was. It felt like very ADHD. It, it is. All over the place. Just everywhere. Um, so quick synopsis is there's this chick who I guess her mom's dead. I, I don't know what what's the story with her dad. I can't remember. I watched this when I was younger. And um, she was living with her grandpa or whatever. But they have to like remodel the house. And so this girl's solution is... I'm going to live in the forest in a tent by myself. Mm -hmm. She continued like, maybe this is something that people do, but I personally, I find it a little bit strange, but she has a frame picture of her mom and like, dead, by the way, dead, dead mother. And she just talks to her a lot. Like I understand like if maybe like somebody had like a really fucking bad day and like you miss your parent, whatever, like you feel like you need to just monologue, but no, it's like, I, I want to say like a constant, it, like a good thirty percent of this show is just her talking to a picture of her dead mother, and then also the premises is is that like there's this amount of boys, and if they get hugged, they turn into like the Japanese zodiac animal animal. So like one, if you accidentally hug him, he turns into a rat. Another one's a dog. Another one's a cat. And if that's not trash, I don't know what is. <laughs> It's definitely an interesting, uh, I guess. It's kinda, unique. It's an interesting concept. I don't know where it goes with that. Like, I'm. Fruits Basket is a show that I have no real need to watch any of it. But, like, if I were to watch it, it'd probably just be because I, I was curious about what are they going to do with this? What's where going is this on? Gonna go? Where is this going? I watched all of it. I just don't remember. <laughs> I mean, that's got to say something, though, right? Yeah, I don't it think. It probably doesn't have that much meaning yeah, no, behind it. I don't it. think too much happens. So, do you recommend Fruits Basket? The, the old one. The old one? Nah. Don't waste your time. But from what you said about the new one. New one's worth the watch, I would say. Worth checking it out. The new 2019 one. I think it's on like Crunchyroll and Hulu and all these other places. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of nice. I'm, it's kind of nice. I, I noticed when we were doing a little bit of research for the show, there's... I use a lot of Crunchyroll and stuff, but I've noticed a lot of these shows, they're starting to get simulcast on multiple platforms. So, you're no longer just kind of... Mm -hmm. Held down to like Crunchyroll. So also, that's nice. if you're wondering where the trashy anime lives, it lives on Hulu. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. There's some of them, though. Sometimes. I mean, I guess that's kind of the thing, though. It's it's like Crunchyroll is a lot of like decent anime. Yeah. The trashy stuff. Platform. But it's like, yeah, it's like most of the uh, interesting stuff is found on like Hulu, <laughs> Amazon Prime Video. Uh, speaking of Amazon Prime Video. Uh, oh I want to go God. into one that kind of almost goes into the same kind of area as Domestic Girlfriend. It's called Scum's Wish. It's on Amazon Prime. Uh, it's interesting. It, it's the premise for me watching the show is I was actually working a eSport thing in Atlanta like three years ago or something like that. And I saw this because I didn't have Crunchyroll or anything at the time. And I had never used Amazon Prime Video, but I, I went on there because I had fucking Amazon Prime. I was like, hey, let's see what kind of shit they have on here to watch. And I saw they had some anime, and then I saw this, and I was like, oh, yeah, let's go ahead and open this up. And uh, whew, I will tell you what. I want to hear Leah's first impressions because she only watched episode one. I yeah. want to know what she remembers um, specifically about this. So the image that's burned into my mind <laughs> Is, you know, there's a lot of kissing and making out in this show, but they take the time 
to like animate fucking drool. It's disgusting. It's the grossest thing I've fucking seen in my life. They're like high schoolers, man. They don't know what the fuck they're There's doing. There's so much saliva. Why? <laughs> like, why do you have to animate that? Like, oh my God. <sighs> um. Also, this this one also does that like borderline, like, oh, we're almost incest, but we're not. I don't know why Japanese people are obsessed with this. this. One, that's but, like, a weird one, too. So... Okay, the premise of this show is that there is a boy and a girl who have a crush on, like, two different people that have a crush on each other. Mm -hmm. And so their, like, solution so it's like is, an X. Yeah, it's like, it, it just, it doesn't match up. And so the two who have a crush on these other two people that like each other is like, oh, we're going to start dating each other since we can't date the people that we actually like. Mm -hmm. um it's like softcore porn <laughs> um mm -hmm. the main girl who has a crush on this one guy who's technically her neighbor but she calls yeah, him fucking brother yeah, which is weird he grew up as her neighbor and he helped her a lot like growing up but he's like considerably older like say she's in high school he's the teacher you know so i mean there's age gap there but she calls him big brother my foot fell asleep i'm so oh, no. i'm sorry yeah, so, I mean, even when she's, like, trying to think of him in, a, like, a sexual way, she refers to him as big brother in her mind, and it's just kind of like... No, mm. don't do that. And I will say, it's like, it's kind of, this is definitely one of those shows that, uh, it's hella sad boys. Yeah. Sad boys is my note, like, <laughs> I mean, the boys. premise of it, I mean, they're dating each other only because the people they want to be with together are, you know, unavailable and with each other, so it's kind of like, oh, well... Huh. You're here, I this guess. Is, yeah, you're here, I guess. And in the first episode, there's a really, like, it's not even graphic as much as it is just really uncomfortable. It's softcore porn. It's a really uncomfortable, like, you're ready to almost watch hentai. Like, that's where the direction it's heading. But it, I, I will uh, not, yeah, I won't spoil nothing. But it, it's an uncomfortable scene. Uh, there, it's also the same scene, which there's drooling and stuff like that as no, well. No, there's drooling pretty much any time two people's mouths touch each other. It's yeah, disgusting. It, it's it's the the special part of the show. It's fucking gross. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's it's pretty trashy. Like it's definitely like it's kind of up there with domestic girlfriend in the aspect of like it's really on the basis the show is built on romance, but more like the sexual natures of it, and so it's kind of like. It's a little trashy. It's yeah. But I would recommend it. I do hard plan recommend. on watching it. I've watched it like three times because I love the show. I think it's it's trash. And it's definitely got its shortcomings. It's by far not the greatest show you'll ever watch ever. But uh, I, I thoroughly enjoy watching it every single time I do. Except for that first episode. That first episode gets real uncomfortable. Like that one scene specifically. I remember watching it that first time in my hotel room and just being like. I feel like this is something oh, I shouldn't shit. be watching. <laughs> Like, I just, like, a little, like I said, you just get uncomfortable. There's sometimes <laughs> in these shows where you're just uncomfortable. You're loving every second of it, but you're uncomfortable. Yep. Um, okay, did you choose that one? Is it my turn? I did. Okay. Um, you know, I'm gonna go... One second, just gonna reiterate, Scum's Wish. Scum's Wish, yeah. That is the Scum's Wish, is that... The other people will break up with their people to be together with them. But until then, they're going to be with fuck. each other. Yeah, it's, it's um, a time. So this one, I'm not going to lie. I don't know anything about this show. This is my favorite anime. <laughs> like, not even as a joke. I love this anime so much. It's called Claymore. Um, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. The show itself is actually pretty good. It, it really is. But the first, like, five or six episodes are fucking terrible. Like, most of the people that I know that mm. have, like, tried to watch this anime just fucking can't. Because the first five to six episodes are absolutely fucking horrible. Um, What's the premise of the show? I know nothing about Claymore. I know it's one of the shows, like Clan Ad, which I think we're talking about later. We uh, are talking about but Clan Ad. It, it's I just look at the animation style and I'm just like I can't do yeah, that. Yeah, the animation me. style it's pretty weird. Um, but what do you, what do you think Claymore is about? The only kind of Claymores I know about are a uh, a two handed 
sword, sword, yeah. and a uh, explosive device triggered by proximity. I mean, so basically, what it is is they're uh, like they're Are they like night girls. They're night girls, basically, okay. like. <laughs> And Magical girls, but with re- Renaissance knights. Yeah, it's this like Renaissance knights of women in <clears throat> this world where there are like monsters running fucking amok, mm-hmm. and um, like you know, all all of them have like silver fucking eyes. They're essentially like magical like women, and like they have these like skills, like they they're each individual and stuff like that. But like eventually, claymores will like kind of. Like deteriorate, like not deteriorate, but like. Is this one of those weird shows in which the girls themselves are claymore swords? No, no. Okay. But like the clay, like the claymores themselves will like eventually like de- deteriorate into like monsters themselves, and because like they're made mm. with like this weird magic, they turn into like even weird monsters, weirder monsters than like the ones that they're supposed to be fighting. And it's a great anime. I fucking love it. If you want to watch it. Skip the first five episodes. It's terrible, but I would 100% recommend this anime. I love it. Do you miss anything important in those first five episodes? I mean, you can watch, like, the first episode be, like, you you get the premise of, like, there are beasts and, like, you know, these women are, like, essentially, like, hired to kill them and, like, exterminate them so, like, the regular civilians can live and whatever and not, like, get raped or whatever. Whatever. (laughs) Whatever, you know, just a normal day. And, um, there's this one specific Claymore and there's this kid that she saves and this kid is annoying as fuck, but like he follows her on her journey because like he's obsessed with her or whatever. And that kid's the fucking worst part about it. I hate him, but it's a great show. Deal. It's my favorite anime. Uh, so I think I'm going to go up and mention one of my favorites, a show that has a very dear spot in my heart. And it's like. This is one of those shows that it's not really, like, trashy in a, like, sexual, like, you know, domestic girlfriendy like... Problematic. <laughs> problematic sort of scenario. This is just a show that it's, like, it's got very nostalgic special places in my heart. But overall, it's really not that good. And it's kind of edgy. And it's furry bait. Uh, it's Wolves Rain. I love Wolves Rain. It is one of my favorite shows. Like, Wolves Rain, to me, is just a show that... You watch when you're ready, like, it's it's a wintertime show that you watch when it's, like, fucking overcast out and cold, and you just want to feel like a sad boy. You watch Wolves Rain. I love it. I would say that's right. Um, Wolves Rain is trash. It's, I, it's trashy. Yeah, I watched it a long time ago. I don't really... Remember. I'm getting ready to marathon some of it later today. Not shocked. Um, but, so the premise of the show, if you've never heard of it, is there's... It's kind of in like a future dystopian Russia. Uh, and they never explicitly say Russia, but you constantly see like maybe like background signs and it's all in Russian. So you're just kind of like, all right, I guess I kind of understand this. And it's really snowy all the time and cold. So I'm like, OK, I could see it. I could see it happening there. Um, it's kind of cyber. I don't want to say like cyberpunky, but like steampunky. So there's like yeah. a lot of machine works and like clockwork city kind of deal going on and like everyone lives inside the cities but if you go outside the city the city's in like a dome where things are nice and outside the dome everything's cold and horrid um but there's these four or five wolves or so that are left everyone thought the wolves were extinct but apparently the wolves can make themselves look like people uh and not in like a werewolfy way like they just straight up look like people even though they're wolves um and the only people that can tell that they're wolves are like some animals and then if they decide to like reveal themselves to you so it's like it's for the most part it's a little weird yeah um but this is the reason i thought about this show right after claymore is because i honestly believe like in the first few episodes like you get the the first few episodes straight up serve the purpose of like introducing a bunch of characters introducing you to the system of like sometimes they're gonna look like they're well sometimes they're not like, you never see, like, there's no transformation or anything. It's just, like, one scene you might see them this way, one scene you might see them that way. And you have to, like, it's there to, like, form the connections of, like, who's who and what's going to go on. Uh, but for the most part, the first half of the show, I think, is, it's, like... Worthless. 
not worthless, but it's like five out of 10 stars, like not great. But it's like if you can make it through that and watch the second half, that's where the show is like really good, I think. But you have to get there. It's kind of one of those shows, though, that it's definitely built on the premise of sad to be sad. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't go as far as to say, like, really good, but it's okay. I will say really good. But it, I think it's hit or miss. I think it's definitely, like, a. it definitely plays to the, the fantasy of, like, like, you have to kind of be in the headspace of, like, like, the first time I watched the show, I'm, like, fucking 13 or some shit. Like, I'm super into wolves, and, you know, you kind of have to be... That younger, impressionable, like, you're either a fucking dragon person, wolf person, or a horse girl. Like, that's the three categories of teenager. I was not any of those. Yeah, and look how you turned out. Is that supposed to be an insult? Uh (laughs) There's your roast. What the fuck? (laughs) Okay. Uh, But, like, yeah, I mean, mean, that's kind of, I think it kind of forms into that, that fantasy of, like, you know, people that say, like, oh, I wonder what life would be like if I was a dog, you know, like, dogs have it so fucking easy. Sleep all day. Hang out. I'd be a cat. Hard recommend. I mean, true. I mean, that same vein, you know. Yeah. Uh, But it's kind of in that vein. But, no, I I recommend Wolves Rain, but it's definitely, like, it's definitely not like a super hard recommend. It's like if you want to feel like a sad boy and like watch something that's it came out by Studio Bones. It was one of their it came out around the same time. It's like Cowboy Bebop. So like all the animation in the ambience and stuff of it is very Cowboy Bebop. The soundtrack is very jazzy. And so it kind of compiles that mood. It's one of those shows that it's kind of like Cowboy Bebop in which I mean, I could go all day and talk about how I think Cowboy Bebop as a show, like a story it's garbage. Trash. There's nothing going Trash. on there. I haven't seen the movie, but I mean, when you talk about the show, like the show is like the, there's it's nothing going on. Because of the fan but, base. It, but it's also, but it's a show that you can watch and you're just in that nostalgia vibe and you're having a good time watching it. I kind of have that vibe for Wolves Are In. Yeah. Um, where you're just kind of nostalgic. You can watch it even if you've never seen it before. Like the Cowboy Bebop's another show I watched recently. Same with Neon Genesis. They're all very nostalgic shows. They aged really well, and they kind of put you in a headspace of like, oh, like early two thousands, you know, mm-hmm. chill. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. We're recommend, not even talking about good anime here. I wouldn't recommend Wolves Rain, but I also would not recommend it if that makes any sense. I feel like it just really depends on who you are as a person if you'll like it or not. If that makes, it's sense. a show that I would say check it out. Like maybe even just like. Try and avoid spoilers, but like just look Read up like a Wikipedia. review. Like yeah. fucking look up a YouTube video on what someone thinks about it because it's like, or at least not even what someone thinks about it, but just like a trailer or something. Yeah. If you vibe with a trailer, because I mean the premise comes off pretty, pretty neat. It's kind of an end of the world dystopia tale. So. All right. And then also just kind of like piggybacking off of like nostalgia vibes. Mm-hmm. So, Planet. <laughs> I just rewatched this. And Clannad's a show I've heard a lot about and I've heard good things about it. Also, this is not a show I want to go into super hard, but you were talking slightly about it, Claymore. I'm just going to throw this out there, but I don't want to actually talk about it. Madoka Magica. Trash. It's good, but it's trash. It's garbage. Yeah. It's a lolly trash. I can, yeah. Um, so, Clannad. <laughs> 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 Fuck. Okay, um, so Clanid, it's a slice of life anime. It's fucking trash, but I love it. It's great. Um, it's it's kind of complicated to describe because like I feel like slice of lives are harder to synopsize because yeah. they don't have hard plots to go yeah. off as much. Like it's basically like a group of friends that meet in high school try and get together this drama club, but like in the background. Like, I don't, I don't really want to spoil anything, but like it gets into like interdimensional, like time shit. And like, you know, there's this it's second casual. story that's going on in another world of, and it's beautiful and it's great. And also I'm pretty sure it's what the music video shelter was based off of by Porter Robinson. Like it gives me hardcore Claymore vibe or not, not Claymore, fuck, Clanid vibes. It gives me Clanid vibes so hard. Would recommend. I love it. But it's trash. Huh. Well, there we go. But I think I'm one of those people where, like, any slice of life anime, like, I might like it, but I'm going to think it's trash. (laughs) So, most of the other shows we have are more modern day. 
except for one. And so I want you to hit on it. God fucking damn it. Real quick before we move to more modern day stuff again. You know, I hate the fact that I've watched this anime. I hate the fact that I've, I've never seen it. I rewatched this anime a couple days ago just because it's so trashy. But I was just, I was curious. Does it, it like, because I, I had no doubt in my mind how bad it was. But mm-hmm. I wanted to see if it was maybe worse than I thought. And it absolutely fucking is. And I can't believe I've spent time in my life watching this goddamn fucking anime. But it's called Vampire Night. And I fucking hate myself. I feel like a 12 year old girl watching fucking Twilight. But basically, this is the one anime... This is a show that it's both... It's, so we're starting to skirt. Like, the reason I will call Wolves Rain trashy is because of its, like... It's got a lot of edge factor kind of to it. Like, boo-hoo, sad boy me, edge. Whereas now, Vampire Night... It's just trash. It's just trash, incest, it, like this is, this is the one edge. where it goes full-blown incest. It's about vampires. It's about fucking vampires. There's, like, this goddamn fucking love triangle. And the main character doesn't realize that this guy that she has a crush on is her brother because like she is a, like a royal vampire lady or whatever and like she got turned into a human because people were trying to eat her and so she forgot all of her memories so she's just been spending this entire fucking like two seasons wanting to bang mm-hmm. this guy and it's her fucking brother but plot twist he's into it she was actually born to be his wife because vampire incest is normal in what the actual fuck anime i'm wait, I can't believe I watched this. I can't believe I've watched it twice. I hate myself. Do you recommend it though? No, don't watch it. Don't watch it. It's it's worse than I can even describe. Oh God. Oh, and actually, I I, I did see one in our notes here that actually is kind of it's kind of in the crest of like between old and new in that weird yeah. hybrid factor. Uh, Blood Plus. This show was like, it's not really like trashy. Like, this is the edgy. This is edgy. Like, this is the pinnacle of edge. I mean, the name is fucking Blood, dude. Like, the show is called Blood Plus. It, that's our edge value skyrocketing. We are owning all the stocks on edge right there. Uh, and I don't remember a lot about the show other than there's this girl and she's got like special blood in her. She's got a katana in that in order, like she could empty her own blood into the katana. And when it filled the katana, then she got like super crazy, like no um, power. No. So (laughs) why do I know? I don't remember like the exact details, but I remember like just the blood filling the sword and she was fucking wild and she kills monsters. And there are monsters in her blood. Kills the monsters. Kills the monsters. Yeah. So, so that's, that's why, why she, she fills the it, sword. Yeah, that's yeah. why she fills the katana with the sword. Um, and then also, it's one of those weird things, kind of like Claymore, where she's also like a monster herself. It's very weird. Yeah. Um, there's a cello guy. Cello guy. He's very cool. <laughs> he very is. cool cello guy. Thank you. Yeah. Um. Doesn't he play like Moonlight Sonata a couple times on the show? I think he does. I think he does. <laughs> I'm suddenly remembering. I was like, wait a second. There's more to that cello guy. He plays some music somewhere in there. Um, I, I don't got, know if I would recommend it. I yeah, I don't know. Like, it, like I said, There's I don't remember like too this, much about the show, but it's like I just remember when we were making a list of like shows to talk about that were either trashy or edgy. Like that one just like suddenly like edgy. burned in my mind of that in like Darker Than Black. Dark and the Black is another like super edge show that I don't remember much about other than it being super edgy, but like it was okay. Like it's not like they were bad shows. Like Blood Plus wasn't bad, but it was like just kind of would I rewatch it? No, I have zero. I kind of want to rewatch it. No, I have zero. <laughs> but I think I'm just uh, rewatching re-watch trashy these. anime right now. I think that's just what I'm doing with my life. Um, also, I remember one very strange episode from Blood Plus, and it like takes t- place. And because like this bitch is like Loki kind of immortal a little bit. And so it takes place in like the Vietnam War. Oh, yeah, because she's been I think it's like she's not that she's she's a vampire, but she's like she is essentially a vampire. Essentially, like they don't call them vampires, but like they're fucking vampires. Like, let's be honest with ourselves. I hate my life. (laughs) It's true. But, like, in that, like, Vietnam one, like, there's, like, weird, like, monster babies, and, like, they look so weird, and it's just traumatizing. Odd. But, no, I completely forgot that she was at the Vietnam. Wow, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I, 
I'm definitely leaving recommendation on this one is a maybe. Yeah, maybe. It's a maybe. Maybe. Like, if you really just, like, thirst for something. The thing is, so it's, like, it's, a lot of these shows, it's, like, they were decent at the time only because it's, like, anime quality was not great. There yeah. wasn't much of it out. You know, occasionally you'd get some shit. But, I mean, modern day, there's just so many shows coming out all the time. And it's a big thing. I mean, a lot of them aren't that great modern day, of course. But there's a lot of choice and there's a lot of, well, kind of, a, kind of a lot of variety. You know, aside from isekais, which there's, like, seven of them every season. Um... But uh, I guess mentioning Isekai, we should go into the one that kind of started the craze of the modern day era. Sword Art Online. Oh my god. Sword Art Online is trash. It's trash. It's trashy. But I like it. <laughs> um, so what I always say is, at least for the first two, Sword Art Online 1 and Sword Art Online 2, I enjoyed the first half of yeah. those seasons. Mm-hmm. The second half was just always... Just cringy and like, weird. weird, especially like season one, though, because then see for me, it's season two. Oh, God. Season like, two. I when, didn't even give second half. Because a... like that's when like I, I think can't... I watched the first two filler episodes after the main arc ended in Gun Girl Online, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was like, nope, 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 I'm good. But I can't I can't remember if it was like his sister or like his cousin where her parents died. So like she was like living with him. No, that's in season one. That's in season one. That's the second half of season one. Okay. Yeah, then. because Asuna is like captured away, whatever. Low but then he has like, to go to the fairy world, but the sister, the little sister that like masturbates to her brother is like fucking helping him through it. It's it's a terrible. time, dude. It's a time. It's terrible. Oh god, it's a time. Like Sword Art Online, it's it's rough. I don't know how it got so popular. Like I think it's because so many people are like ready for the concept of full dive VR. New. I think that's the big thing. Is like there's been some isekais here and there where you're like transported to another world, you know, like uh no game, no life, things like that. You know, there's transportation animes out there, but there hasn't really ever been like that many recent or like good ones where it's like a full dive, like it's just virtual reality. And I really people like the concept really got on board online. with that. I really like the concept of it. It's pretty fucking cool. Um, what I recommend watch, watch the, the first, first half. half. <laughs> yeah. You'll you'll trust us. You'll know when the Jeez. first half is done. Like so the concept of the show, and I know we haven't we've been trying to synopsize the things we remember, but in this oh, yeah. one, uh the main character, like they do this full dive VR, this new game comes out, and then suddenly the creator of the game says Hey, you Fuck can't you. actually leave the system. You're stuck in here. And if you die in the game, you die in real life. That's it. Boom. Have fun. Have fun. Yeah. So, uh, but it, I mean, it's really well written in that first. I mean. Oh, yeah. It's cool. It's a cool concept. What I, I kind like of it. wish they did is I wish like they just summer like it's a first half. Like if they had stretched that throughout a whole season, like that would have been fine. Yeah. And then if you took Gun Gale or whatever and stretch it through the whole season, it'd been fine. And actually, they did because they came out with Sword Art Online Gun Gale Alternative. And that's actually a pretty good show. That one's like completely about like battle royales and stuff like that. And it doesn't include the actual main characters. There's so much like Sword Art Online stuff. Like it started out with uh-huh. the first thing. And it's just, it's like, I don't, I don't know where it's gone, but it's gone a lot of places. Yeah. So it's like. I don't know. I could rant on Sword Art Online for a long time because there's so much content of it now. Like yeah, also like that lot. goes with like fate. Like I feel like if we were talking about trashy animes, fate is up there. But there's just so many fate shows and I've never watched a single one of them because I just don't want to f- fucking deal with it. I don't want to fuck Leonardo DiCaprio fucking or not Leonardo, Di- <laughs> Leonardo Da Vinci. I don't want to King Arthur. No, I don't want a waifu of that. Like, no, no, thanks. Why that? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm staying away from that, but like Sword Art Online, it's like, uh, I don't know. Sword Art Online, like the new new stuff, the Allisonization kind of bullshit is pretty good. I'm enjoying it. Um, I've only seen like that first like iteration of Sword Art Online and I stick by, watch the first half, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Ignore the second half. There's like... Sword Art, uh, it's a show I don't enjoy that much, but I'm still watching it because it's okay enough. Um, it's, but it's, it's like one of those things where it's good, but it it like really like paved away. Which speaking of paved away, because this this one it's not really modern anime. It's a little bit on the older side. Will this derail us completely? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going Let me for... stop you there real quick. No, Let man. me stop you there real quick. I just gotta say, Sword Art Online. It's we're talking about it. Not like we're not just talking about these shows because we recommend them. Just reminding ourselves of that, but also just because what makes them trashy. It's got. 
weird, incense. weird incesty stuff in way more than one scenario, like in the second season mm-hmm. or in the second half of the first season, actually. A lot of rapey stuff. A lot of rapey. It's very rapey. And then in second season, there's a little bit more rapey stuff. Sword Art Online, Alicinization. There's an almost graphic rape ish scene that get, it gets kind of it gets handled like but it's it. very rapey i don't like and uh it. yeah i don't i don't it doesn't it it's like like i said there's always and actually i don't think rapey stuff ever actually like serves a purpose but it's like if you get sexual i guess in a show it at least have it serve a purpose most of the time it's like fan servicey in sword art mm. online and especially the rapey stuff like the, it's rapey but they're trying to portray it as like hey this is fan service and i'm just like no no i don't no! Stop! It's fucked. Yeah, Sword Art Online's fucked. Recommend, though. I mean, it's worth a watch, I guess. This is okay. Just, just, just skip past the rapey. Just skip the rapey <laughs> shit, because it's all over the place. Okay, but this one, it kind of reminds me of Sword Art Online, not because of the premise so much, but because of, like, I it's view it older. as... It's an iconic anime, and it kind of, like, paved the future for like a little bit you know Mm -hmm. and it's death note and we're not talking about the goddamn netflix live action thing i haven't seen it i don't want to see it you don't want to see it. but um this is an iconic anime it really paved the way i stand by the fact that it's a very unique concept and it's done very well and the art's pretty good Mm -hmm. but it's a little trashy (laughs) it's just I don't even know if I want to give it the trashy title as much as it's edgy. edgy. It's, it's edgy. edgy. Like everything's spiky and sharp and take an apple and I eat it. <laughs> but like oh. da, 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 fucking angel singing. Uh, I mean, Death Note's about gods of death watch over the world, the Shinigami. And they're the ones like they have they these have notebooks that when it's someone's time to die, they're the one that writes their name in it and says like, all right, this is your donezo. You can get hit uh, by a But car. one of them comes into possession of one and tosses it in the human world and Light Yagami, the main character, finds he's it. Bored. Finds it, yeah. Finds it, picks it up, thinks it's a joke, tests it, realizes it's not a joke, but he's like super smart. He's like top student in Japan, whatever. He finds it. Uh, the Shinigami approaches him. He's like, hey, now that you have this notebook, like, guess what? Your soul's kind of fucked, so I mean, you might as well keep going. And he's like, you know what? You're right. I'm going to cleanse the world of criminals. And then she gets twisty and weird. So it's like edgy, but really, really Mass good. Mass genocide. Insanely good. But it is, it's kind of, it's a moral. And, and that's also, kind of the I biggest like part it of it. Ends. I really like the ending. I feel like it's a good, like, no, conclusion. Not me. Really? <laughs> I'm not. I, I stood on the other side of the fence of wanting a different outcome. Like just everybody dying? Uh, well, well, I, I don't want to go into too many spoilers here. We can talk about that one later. Okay, we'll talk about But I will that. say it's a hard recommend. Like, yeah. it's, it's insanely good. It's, if you watch it's anime, edgy. like, you gotta watch it. You've probably already seen it kind of yeah. deal. It's edgy. Um, it's, you know, it's it's every, like, high school boy, neat, like, all of them wanted to be, like, L or like. Oh, you yeah. were one of those two people. You either wanted everyone dead or you wanted to be a fucking sugar addict junkie that just sits in their room in the dark. It's like the two sides of it. Yeah. Like that's the two characters. You're either ready to commit genocide or you're just a fucking weird shut in. But no, it's a it's a good recommend. I recommend uh, Death Note. Yep. Oh boy. Oh, we got some stuff to talk about here. There's a lot of stuff. Where you want to go? I I don't. I want to like. We're kind of skirting in this nice little lull of like. There's some real bad shit, like trashy shit to talk about here. But I think I see a couple. Uh, yeah, that, that we like, could talk we, about that like they're trashy but they're like good so i think i'm gonna talk about yamada's first time so this was a show i don't even remember how i found it uh i watched it a long time ago like 23 no 2014 probably i don't know i'd come back to do some work on a house uh back towards home and it came up and the premise of the show is there's a girl and she's going into high school, and her goal is before she like graduates high school or whatever, she wants to sleep with 100 guys. She wants to be just a, an absolute, like, you know, floozy. Banging out. But she still has her virginity. And so she ends up seeing this, like, really nerdy guy. Um, and she's like, hey, he's going to be my first one. I'm going to be his first. He's going to be my first. And then from there, it's just hallelujah. We're going to bang everybody. 
uh, in the show is her trying to lose her virginity with this guy, but she keeps failing. She keeps getting close, but she keeps failing. And it's like kind of a rom-com kind of deal. It's really on the comedic side, but and I usually don't care too much for most comedic animes, but I think Yamada's first time was... But as that premise says, I mean, it's it's a trashy premise. Yeah. Like, she is trying to bang. That is 100% her intentions, uh, but it's just Not really silly. banging it out is bad, but making a show purely about banging it out is yeah. trashy. Well, I mean, see, the thing is, though, I mean, you had, like, Scum's Wish or Domestic Girlfriend, and those shows are shows about, like, banging out with actual banging it out going on, whereas Yamada's first time was like, hey, yeah. we're trying to do this, but it's actually just kind of funny, you know, it's... Ha ha, laugh, laugh, laugh. But I recommend it. It was it was entertaining. It's a very, like, if you're looking for something that's, like, more on the comedic side, really lighthearted and funny, um, it, it's a it's pretty... Uh, recommend. It's a recommend, yeah. But it's trashy. Okay. Um, and then next, uh, we got another Slice of Life anime, which, um, actually, before we talk about this one, I'm going to talk about one more Slice of Life, but, like, not not really... Um, you're a lie in April. Trash. I hate it. Um, but the next one is... Hey, you're not you're just, you're no. just gonna leave it there? I'm just gonna leave it there. I don't want to talk about it. It's trash. I hate it. <laughs> um, but the it, next... It's sad, boys. Like, that's another show that I'm just gonna say. It's sad just for the sake of being sad. Yeah. Stupid. <laughs> um, but the next one is Auron High School Host Club. That's another lighthearted one. It's another lighthearted one. Basically, it's a... So in Japan, you have like host clubs. I think it's more of a Japan cultural thing. Um, and I, because I, I believe they do exist. Host clubs are like, it's a type of club that you can go to. And so uh, think of semi like a maid cafe, but it's kind of for. Tea time. Yeah, but it's kind of, it's hosted by men for like girls to come and just hang out with men and talk to them and, you know, kind of have just Quiet. that interaction of like, hey, there's these attractive guys and we can talk and hang out with them after school and have like, you know. And that that's just that's what they they host. Uh, but the main character is a girl that looks like a dude. Yep. And, you know, most of the show is absolutely everybody mistaking her for a guy mm -hmm. and she doesn't correct them. She becomes one of the guys in this host club. Girls get crushes on her because they mm -hmm. think that she's a guy um, there. <laughs> I really like when like there's like these light bulbs like, mm -hmm. for when each of, like, the main guy characters, they're like, oh. I understand. I understand. I get it. This is a girl. Yeah. And it's, like, I like the little animation of, like, da -da ding like, when everybody, like, when eventually gets it. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's fun. So, basically, this entire show is, like, everybody has a crush on this girl, whether they think that she's a guy or whether if they think that she's a girl. And, uh... It's 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 funny. It's great. It's lighthearted, but it's trashy. It is kind of trashy, but it is lighthearted. Like there's so many like different sides. So like the trashy coin, we're using it kind of as like a catch all. It's a you catch all, know? yeah. Uh, because I mean, like I said, I mean you have things like domestic girlfriend and scum's wish, which are trashy but not lighthearted and just very like oh wow oh, oh. Ooh, oh what's gonna I happen next? No way. Oh yeah, definitely. And then suddenly you have like these shows which are like oh i get it. oh that's yeah, funny, funny. Ha -ha. very cool but trashy yeah so i would recommend or high school house club have, do do we do it i i recommend it i've haven't finished it it's a show i've what? like i've watched like 80 percent of it so it's like i've almost finished it but then i just never i got distracted by other shit and I mean, then i just never really went back and finished it because i got like the premise so it's like it's not really a show that's gonna like really build up to like a big it's a slice of life anime like yeah it's not building up to like anything then, huge you know it's just like, oh, and then life went on. Yeah. Uh, but no, it, it was, it was uh, enjoyable. Uh, I was going to go into one, but actually let's stick a little bit to the uh, slice of life while we're at it. And I'm going to mention um, citrus. God damn it. I knew you were going to say citrus. God. I Citrus, I can't even say, like, I remember I had to watch it when it was coming out. It was a show that I looked forward to every week. I was like, God, I can't wait for citrus to come out. Like, fuck. What's going to happen? Uh, but it's it's very similar to Domestic Girlfriend's premise in a way of, you know, parents getting remarried and voila, these two main characters uh, now siblings, are now technically siblings. Technically not siblings. Technically know? not siblings. They're step siblings. Uh, but it's a whole and they're lot crushing on <laughs> They're crushing on each other and they're both girls. 
that attend like a girl school, and one's like a super bubbly, like I girly got my girl. Nails done. <laughs> yeah, my hair, my makeup, whatever. And the other one's the like president of the disciplinary committee, Resting and she's bitch face. she's very like cold and just like angry all the time, and also hooks up with the teacher. Something like but that. I don't remember. There's makes, a reason for it, but I don't remember. But also makes out with her new sister. Yeah. Yeah, and I, there's, like, reasons for it that I don't really remember, and I don't really care to remember. I was just like, huh. Hmm. Hmm. Will you look at that? Uh, I I don't know if I recommend Citrus, though, because, like, at the end of the day, like, it's, it is an interesting time, but it's like, if you put it up, so I'll say I kind of recommend it, but if it was in competition versus if you should watch that versus, like, Domestic Girlfriend or Scum's Wish, oh, yeah, either of those two definitely rank Way above Higher, citrus. Yeah. Yeah, but it's citrus. still recommend. Yeah, citrus is neat. And it, I'll tell you what, that, that's not the only, like, it, there's definitely other people that come in, other girls that want to kiss all the other girls, and it's, it's, it's a good time. It's very gay. It's very gay. It's a good time, though. Woo. It's a good time. Okay. Um, I'm thinking maybe we should, uh, you know, kind of touch on a little bit of that. Yeah. Okay. So the next one is Rosario plus Vampire trashy god damn it why are there so many fucking vampire animes uh because they're not only edgy but trashy they're just straight like oh when i think of like when people have like bad concepts on like what anime truly is about it's about some of these next shows we're gonna be talking about which is like rosario plus yeah Um, so what's the premise for rosario plus okay so once again this is an anime that i watched back in the day um but I have some vivid memories on the plot. I have a, a lot of a lot of boob memories, a lot of panty shot memories. Oh, it's hundred percent. It was known for its panty shots. Um, but so basically, the premise is is like there is this school. I don't think it's. It might be strictly vampires. No, I think no, it's, it's like monsters. monsters. Yeah. yeah. Um. Supernatural. Yeah, supernatural people like high school, and this human guy. Uh huh. Ac- of course. Accidentally attends. And there uh-huh. are a bunch of kawaii girls who just they're all these here monster for it. girls. Oh yeah, they're here for it. And, but like, okay, I want to say like when they're monster girls, because there's another one that's got some monster girls where they're actually monster girls. Yeah, this Whereas, is more like supernatural girls. Yeah, this is more like supernatural girls. Like you know, they look normal. Sometimes they might like turn into an evil vampire or what the fuck ever else. I think one of them, like, controls ice. I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Love ice girl. Ice um, girl is bae. That's ice, waifu material waifu. right there. Um, but no, definitely, like, the big thing that Rosaria, I know, definitely, like, if you ever watched, like, an AMV back in the day, an anime music video of that, and, like, it was always filled with the fucking transformation. It's like Sailor Moon transformation, except when the Rosaria, when the vampire girl transforms... Uh, what happens to her is she just gets her like double D's. Yeah, she gets double D's. Her short, her skirt, skirt gets shorter. shorter, and her butt gets bigger, and you get panty shots every single time. Yeah, that's the show. Like that is the sh- like I think, like I know stuff happens, but the premise of the show is panty, panty shots, shots and boobs getting bigger, and then she fights people and like drinking his blood occasionally. Yeah, and then afterwards he he drinks, uh, she drinks his blood, and that that's you know that's about it. It's, it's trash. God damn, that show is trash. Um, I wouldn't recommend this unless you kind of like want to hate watch it. <laughs> That's, uh, I mean, a lot of these next ones are like kind of in that vein. I can't recommend it. They're just so trashy. But like, you know, if you are in, sometimes you are just in the headspace. Like, I need to fucking watch something that, like, you know, it's it's like edging to watch some of these shows. It's practically all it is. Yeah. Like, with this fucking... The so, train wreck, like, aspect. Like, it's so bad. Like, you can't look away. Yeah. And I, I was going to talk about Heaven's Lost Property right now, but you actually bring up the fact that there is another anime that is completely about Monster Girls, and that's Monster Mazume, Everyday Life with Monster Girls. I want to know you... So, I got Leah. We were doing research yesterday. She'd never heard of the show. I was like, all right, you got to watch episode one. Like, it's straight up episode one tells you everything you need to know. Just know that the show gets much worse. So, episode one, what were your thoughts, please? So, this is the show where, like, the girls are actually, like, monsters. Like, this, it's like... She's a lamia. That's she's a lamia, which is a half snake, half 
girl. Mm-hmm. And I, like, like, words can't describe it. It's so... The very first scene of episode one is she's cuddling with him to try and keep warm. He wants to go away. She's squeezing him. He she, can't get out. So he grabs the... him. She, he grabs the tip of her tail. That's her sensitive spot. And then she ends up orgasming off of it. The people who listen to this anime are not... Or not <laughs> listen to this anime who listen to this podcast you're not getting the full effect of like where i'm at right now but god i like oh my there's a it's bird a girl she lays an egg i don't oh, yeah. i don't i don't i don't i that's my those, those are my thoughts no yeah like monster mizume it. is straight up hentai like you can't change my mind monster mizume is straight hentai like you don't see like genitals but you pretty much see everything else you, it's, it's like, you know, it's like fucking. She puts her like snake tail down his pants. <laughs> I'm in pain. Fuck that anime. I don't recommend it. Don't watch it. It's trash. Yeah, if you are really like jonesing for some no. like weird sexual shit. No. It's a show. It's there. I'd say Monster Mizume is a show that you have to at least watch one episode just for the experience. Oh, if you are an anime God. watcher and you've never watched it, like. Degrade yourself. We're talking about degrading shit now. No. Don't do it. Degrade yourself. No. Do it. No. Just do it. Brandon, fuck off. <laughs> Leave. I mean, this is going... Your words yesterday that I put down here for uh, notes for Monster Mazume was mostly... The big one that gets me is just no words. There's no words. It's an experience. I'm telling you. It's, it's, it's straight hentai without the hentai. It's real weird. Oh, it's real perverted. Heaven's Lost Property is an anime. Um, <laughs> Just like moving on. Heaven's Lost Property is also, it goes into the other trope. So there's tropes of animes that, like, the trope itself is straight trash. And a lot of these, like Rosaria Plus and Monster Mizume and Heaven's Lost Property, they're all harem anime. So there's boy with a bunch of girls, you know? And so the girls are all obsessed with him. And that's, I mean, you could even. You could even easily argue that Sword Art Online is a harem anime. Look so at badass Kirito and all the girls want to be with him. So is like a uh, clan Ed. Yeah, it's kind of, it, it's it's there, you know. It's a thing. Um, but yeah, Heaven's the Last Property. I don't remember a whole lot about it, but I just remember it's another one of those shows, kind of like with the writing of like Monster Mizume, kind of with the writing of like uh, Elf and Light a little bit to where the main character, like the girls are all like, they have no intelligence to them they are straight up just panty shots and fucking heaven's lost property like she's a fallen angel but she's like i i i don't know it's a harem anime man like i don't know how to describe it you could catch all these trashy ones here and a lot of them just say like hey it's a harem anime like that's all you need to say to like tell anyone like the premise of the show and it's trash yep but like I'm not not recommending Monster Mizume and Heaven's Lost Property. Like, it's not a not recommendation. I'm oh, just it's a saying. not recommend for Monster Mizume. Uh, I don't know. Don't that do that show, like, I, I will do the catch-all. I've gotten to the egg-laying episode about three, two or three different times at this point, and I've never been able to watch past that because I'm just, I can't do it. I hate it. I, I've ne I don't know how the show ends. I don't know where it goes. I just know that I can't. It's an experience, though. Sometimes you just want to hate yourself, man. And you need a reason for it. So not you watch like Monster that. Mizume not, and then you hate yourself. Not like that, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that. <laughs> it's fucked. Let's go somewhere else. Take me somewhere else, Brandon. Take you somewhere else. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about a more uh, acceptable uh, waifu culture then. We'll, we'll, we'll step back a little bit and then we'll come back into kind of one of the other big ones. So Spice and Wolf. I watched this when I was younger. The thing is, it's bad. Spice and Wolf had it. So, Holo the Wise Wolf. It's it's like it's one of those shows where it's got like top tier waifu, like Holo. Holo, she is a top tier waifu. She is up there. She's real um, cute. But I can't really. It's like it's not the trashiest thing about the show is the fact that it has Holo, who is occasionally naked but you don't see anything kind of deal yeah. um 
she's just top tier. And I mean, that's probably the trashiest thing about the show. But the show is mostly about like microeconomics and trading and bartering. And you just learn about like economics yeah. with a waifu on board with you. Yep, basically. And I don't know. It, it's a fun. Spice and Wolf is always one of those like I want to put it under the category of it's a very wholesome anime. So it's like if you're just in the mood for something like warm, wholesome, watch before bed just to get you like comfy and ready to sleep. Because I mean, what puts you to sleep harder than fucking microeconomics, man? True. It's not action based. I mean, there's a couple action scenes, but they're really not. There's like two or three of them in the whole show and there's like two seasons. But I recommend Spice and Wolf. I like Spice and Wolf. Spice and Wolf is a good time. Where would you like to transport us then? You know, the rest of these are mostly ones that you've watched that I haven't seen, so I'm going to let you take the reins. Okay. Uh, So before we go into... Oh, we could touch on... So there's a current one going on right now that I only have just quick thoughts on, Assassin's Pride. I haven't seen this one at all. No idea about it. uh, I mean, it's... uh, It's just edgy. The writing is not great. Um, It's straight up... It's the main characters are built almost on a Kirito trope. Like Kirito, I feel like after Sword Art Online came out, like that character had existed as a character trope before, but like people saw that it worked and people liked it. So now they kind of are just like, wow. So like the the big critique on Assassin's Pride is like, this is Kirito and Asuna, except Asuna is a very little child and Kirito is just, it's straight Kirito. Oh, he's a vampire, by the way. That's kind of a spoiler, but that's like... I, I I don't know if you knew that one. He's a fam. It's Kirito, but he's a vampire. Edgy. Hell yeah. Um, and then I want to bring up some Studio Trigger, Darling in the Franks and Kill a Kill. I'm just gonna put them both together, kind of. Yeah. Especially like, I don't know. They're trashy for kind of semi different reasons. Not to say that they're bad shows, though. I thoroughly recommend. I like I, oh, by the way, I I can't say I recommend Assassin's Pride. That's a that's a no recommend on that one. Probably. I haven't seen it. You're not missing anything. Great. But Darling in the Franks and Kill a Kill are both recommends. I'm going to state Kill that Kill. up front. Uh, Kill a Kill, though, I mean, the premise of the show is she has this like half of a scissor. It's a scissor blade, and there are clothes. Um, that like super power up these girls and they're at like this academy and they wear these clothes that give them superpowers um without going too far into the like story let's just say like blanket statements of the clothes are evil by the way and there is a clan like in the show called nudist beach and they're naked uh and barely covered up because the clothes are evil and they want to destroy the clothes like that's a premise like that's trashy it's It's fun it's a fun show but God Trashy. damn, I'll tell you what. My girlfriend at the time walked in on me watching the season finale of Kill a Kill, and I had some explaining to do. I'm just going to put it there. Oh my I had God. some big explaining to do on what exactly was going on, because trust me, it's a ride. It's a trip. Uh, so definitely Kill a Kill recommend. Darling in the Franks kind of goes into uh, Dinosaur Waifu Girlfriend Zero Two being just like, you know, it, it's definitely a studio trigger anime, and like the animation's super clean. Uh, The premise is kind of trashy. You kind of have this main character that the main female is like obsessed with. And so there's kind of like that trope just going on the entire single time. And while I don't enjoy it, it's definitely it's just. I find there's just so much of like. I like more grounded writing a lot of the time and a lot of the stuff I consume, even if it's like fantasy stuff like there's a lot of anime out there that we've talked about, like even domestic girlfriend stuff, even though we talk about like. These tropes and they seem on face value like, yes, like it's the boy and the two girls or whatever. Uh, a lot of times they like don't actually like like each other or there's like weird character dynamics. Anytime there's like a show where there's just a, a male character in females, just like the girls just love them or like have an obsession with them. I'm just like, that's so trashy. Yeah. It's like, it's just God. I don't. It's not that I don't enjoy it, but it's trash. It's like, oh, you're a guy. I'm obsessed with you. That's it. That's it. That's that, it. That's the character. No like, other option. Writing. And it's like, yeah, you can like splash some like spice in there. That's like, oh, this is maybe why. But it's like, no, <laughs> it's straight up just like, I love you. Why? I love you. I, don't know. I just met you, but I love you. I must confess my love to you, senpai. Yeah, essentially. So like, I love those are hard recommended shows, but I did have to touch on them. If we're talking about like trash, 
uh, trashy kind of subgenre. You could, there's a lot you could like even say just in anything practically. The Studio Trigger has worked on from a like Gurren Logan and all those others. Um, there's always kind of that weird element. They always just got to make it weird. Yeah. But that's also what makes them Studio Trigger, and that's why we like them. Uh, is our last one your manga? I think it is. So, you're a manga sensei. The fuck? Had you heard of it ever before I brought it up? No. So, Thanks premise... Thanks for that. You're welcome. So, premise to you're a manga sensei. I'll, I'll just spoil episode one. Um, we have a this young... This girl's a bitch. We have a nice young man, and he's a light novel author. And he's been writing these books, and he got it published, and he's got some success off of it. Um, and he works alongside of a artist of his called by the like handle of Iramanga Sensei. Um, and they do like some erotic art for the characters. They do like weird it's things anime. here and there. Or yeah. Well, manga, well, but, so. well, it's it, it's not it's even Japan. that. It's just it's, it's the it's Iramanga Sensei is what it is. <laughs> um, but he ends up like trying to figure out like who this artist is. Meanwhile, he lives at home. Their parent his. He has a sister, like a stepsister, Step-sister. that he never sees because their parents died in some horrible accident or something, and she's a shut-in now, and she just, like, refuses to leave her room. So he just, like, leaves food for her, like, outside her door and comes and cleans it up later. And so he's kind of, like, going about his day, and he learns that his manga artist is doing a live stream. And he's going to be like, all right, I'm going to go watch this, see if I can figure out who it is or, like, What's going on? And they just live stream themselves, like drawing the characters, doing some like fan art stuff. And then as they're signing off, they don't turn their camera off and they go to undress. And he notices in the background of the webcam feed the same dinner he made for his goddamn the food sister. tray with the message that he left his sister, like, hey, like, you know, I'd like come to see what room, yeah, I come out of your room. He sees that in the background. Really, he makes the connection that his sister is this Iramanga Sensei. And she's getting ready to get like improper like naked on camera and he tries to stop her and he catches it and then they make the connection that this person who's been drawing like hentai art for like his light novel series i don't know how old is like she's like 12 be. dude she is so like young maybe maybe I, 12 maybe, maybe 12. like 8 10 wouldn't like she's portrayed as really young like uh, like dirt like you feel dirty uh, young uh <laughs> And honestly, I've never actually seen past the first episode myself because I've always seen that first episode of like, damn, I'm going to watch this someday. Kind of on the same premise of like Monster Mizume where it's like when I really just have nothing left to go for me, I need to watch that show. Uh, But it's very trashy, super embarrassing to watch. Uncomfortable. I constantly find myself asking why because there's also like a lot of like. The show is very, like, its camera angles and stuff are very sexualized on the little girl. Who's, like, maybe eight. Maybe eight, ten, whatever. Like, very young. And you just, you want it to stop. And and from what I hear from watching, like, review channels on, like, YouTube and stuff like that, it doesn't. It gets worse. It's, I don't know. It's fucked. Also, like, granted. I, I do not condone like these very like suggestive. Weird I cannot actually things. recommend your no, manga sense. No, don't. I recommend don't looking it. into it just to like know that it exists. No, but anyways, I don't condone like the suggestive portrayal of a very very young girl. Who, I don't know how nope. old she is, but I can nope. I can tell that it is too young. Yes, <laughs> but this girl is a fucking bitch like i stand by it she's she might be eight but she's a goddamn fucking bitch like her brother he like she does not leave her room like i would not be surprised if she had like a bedpan in there kind of deal and like her brother like cooks meals for her like writes her like little notes like being like oh my god i love you so much little sister i miss you blah 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 this bitch doesn't even talk to her brother. Like, to communicate, she stomps on the floor. Like, how much of an asshole do you gotta be? Like, you goddamn privileged little eight-year-old. I would rip you up by your hair and be like, no, cut that shit out. Yeah, essentially. I don't know. That show, that show, I, we save it for last because it's, it's, that's it. like, 
Like, Monster Mazuma is fucked, but, I mean, at least everyone's, like, mature and, like, you know, it's, like... Consensual. Consensual Not really. Not really. I mean, well, I mean, the guy... Well, I mean, kind of. I don't know. It's questionable. It's questionable. It's like, all these other shows, though, at least everyone's, like, of age enough to where you're, like, okay. Or at least the same age. Yeah, or at least the same age. Uh, you're a manga sensei, though. It's, like... And not a child. Like, not a literal child. Like, maybe, like, a teenager... Granted, still it's kind of so. Weird, one I was like, gonna throw out there too that no game, no life is kind of in that same vein of like there's this no game, no life is an isekai anime in which there's this duo, this brother and sister, and they're like insane gamers. Like no matter what game they play, they always win chess, anything. They know how to beat every single game. They go by like a, a code name for the duo of them. I forget what their code name is, uh, but they're playing this game and they get transported to a world where. All the laws and everything in the world is run off of, like, gaming. And so it's, like, if you need, like, something done or if you want to become, like, king of something, like, you have to beat them in a game. And it's always, like, all these variant games. And it's actually a really entertaining show. I will say it's a very, like, it's kind of like Death Note where it's, like, 5D chess going on all the time. But there's also, like, a lot of scenes in which, like, the little sister is kind of the same thing where she's, like, 10 years old and she's kind of sexualized and you're just kind of, like, hmm... No, no thanks. I'm Gucci. Anime is gross sometimes. But at least No Game, No Life is like one of those shows that it has that like premise behind it of like, you know, there there's like a plot there. And it's like there's just the occasional scene where you're just like, oh, why, why is this here? But the show itself holds up. You're a manga sensei. No, that's what you're a manga sensei is, is the why no. That's the entire show. The plot is why no. Um, but yeah, no, um, I kind of hate anime a little bit more right now, but like, that's what happens when you, like I said, I mean, these are, this is a discussion just straight up. Maybe we'll have an episode where we talk about like good, the good, the good, good shit. anime. Uh, but I, I, we just, like I said, watched Domestic Girlfriend and got inspired to talk about, even though Domestic Girlfriend is good, the premise it's is trashy. It's very trashy. It's very trashy. So going to be like, kind of like, uh, I don't know. I hope I hope there was some good discussion in here of shows that you should watch or shows that maybe like piqued your curiosity. Or maybe just don't. Or just don't. I don't know. It's out there. I just wanted to put this out there as like a catch all review of like, hey, here's shows that I've seen that I s- kind of wish I didn't. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was our episode. We'll see you guys next week. I'm sorry. for. Thanks for joining us yeah. on the uh, trashy Thanks. anime side quest. It was probably very cringy for everybody. And let me tell you, it was cringy for us, too. Oh, no. I had a great time. I always have a great time. All That's right. what I'm here for. I mean, I had a good time, but I'm traumatized. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>